Hey, what's up? My name is Nigel, and I talk a lot about lighting and you know simple lighting techniques here on my channel. But one thing that I've been getting a lot of questions about is how to utilize and shape natural light. So sometimes good lighting is really all about timing. Finding the right time of the day where the light is gonna be just right can make or break your shot. So knowing what the weather is gonna be like and where the sun is gonna be are really crucial. So there's two apps that I like to use to help me track that. So there are a lot of apps out there that can help you do this, but my current favorites are Lumos and Dark Sky. Now, Lumos is kind of a cheaper version of the really popular Sunseeker, and it basically it just gives you an idea of where the sun is gonna be so you can plan your shots around that. Now for weather, you can use really any weather app, but one that I find really accurate is one called Dark Sky, and I use it a lot to kind of, you know, time when I'm gonna go outside and do any kind of outside activity, but it kind of shows you a map view of like where rain clouds are, and it kind of gives you a better idea of what the weather is actually gonna be like. Now, when I can, I always choose to film in either the morning hours or the evening hours, and those are typically considered the golden hours for or filmmaking or photography. And the reason being is because the sun is dipping and so you have a very nice soft and directional light. And it really it's gonna make any camera look good even if your camera doesn't have the greatest dynamic range. One of the worst times to film outdoors is in what's called high noon. And that's when the sun is directly above you and it causes these really bad shadows right under your eyes, which is definitely not what you want because that just never looks good. And that brings us to the next tool that you can use to help shape and soften natural light. So you probably already have this, but if not, you've probably seen it in use before. And it's one of these. This is a simple five in one reflector. Now this is a pretty small one, and I would recommend that you look into getting a much bigger 5-in-1 reflector than this, because the bigger the reflector, the larger the source, the larger the source, the softer the light. So this 5-in-1 reflector, as the name implies, has five functions. You have the white side, which just can be used as a bounce, just to bounce some light back onto your subject. You have the gold side, which to be honest, I don't really ever use. And you also have the silver side, which is great for bouncing even more light onto your subject. And then also, the black side. Now this can be really great for doing some negative fill, and that's just to block any ambient light from hitting your subject, and this will definitely help shape your light a lot. But if you're keeping count, that was only four functions. The fifth function of a 5-in-1 reflector is actually diffusion, and this is what's gonna help you a lot if you ever have to film in high noon sun. Okay, so this is basically high noon lighting. I got some really bad shadows over my eyes, but with simple diffusion, as you can see, the shadows are nice and soft and we have a really nice exposed image. So that's what having a simple five-in-one reflector with a diffusion panel can do for you. So as you can see in this example, we are filming in high noon. The sun is directly above the subject and you can see these really unflattering shadows under her eyes. Now, if we take the five-in-one reflector and we put it directly above her, that's gonna soften the light and make the shot just so much better. So something that definitely can't be overlooked is having a good variable ND filter. Now I use one by Nissi and it's pretty good as far as like, it doesn't take that much of the sharpness away from my lenses, but that's definitely something that if you're gonna be filming a lot in natural light, having a good ND filter to block the light and being able to shoot at lower apertures. Right now I'm shooting at F3.5. That's a very crucial thing to have. So definitely look to adding a variable ND filter or just ND filters in general into your kit. Let's talk a little bit about how you can use natural light to shoot YouTube videos like this. Obviously a really great way to utilize natural light is to use a window. And if you have a big window like I do in my office, it can be a really nice, big and soft light source to light a YouTube video with. Just having a large window with some blinds can help soften and shape the light and give you something that's actually really flattering. So I'm gonna move my camera and show you what filming in front of a window would look like if I was making a YouTube video. Okay, so here we are and I am being lit with my window and I've just used my blinds to help shape the light so that it hits my face really nicely and I even have just a little bit of negative fill 
right over here just to block any of the reflections off my white walls from coming back on me. And it's just giving me a really nice shape to the light. And I think this actually looks really good. I would be totally fine with shooting a YouTube video just using my window. So my window does face to the east. And since the sun is on the decline right now, I don't have a lot of light blasting through this window. But if I did, there are some ways that you can soften the light even more so that you're not getting too harsh of a light on your face. Now something really cheap and effective is something like this. This is just a really cheap shower curtain that I got for like five bucks or something like that. You can just hang this in front of your window and that'll soften the light really, really nicely. Something else that works really well are shears. They really help break up the light and create a really nice, soft, flattering light on your subject. So yeah, that is how I utilize and shape natural light. And hopefully this was a little bit encouraging if you don't currently have any lights yet and you're trying to make some nice looking images, you can can do it with some pretty cheap equipment. Anyways, I think that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, it would be really cool if you hit the like button. And yeah, if you'd like to check out some more of my videos, you can click on either side of my face. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch y'all next time. Later.